well, maybe all we needed was a change in shape here at Locomotive Leipzig. We've now played two games with the 4 2 3 1 fluid counter attack and picked up two comprehensive 1 0 wins. We are now mid table and about to take on two teams below us. Hopefully, we can start to get on a bit of a roll. Welcome to episode 33 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming today we take on Magdeburg, bottom of the table. And off the back of that we do travel to take on Darmstadt who are just one spot below us in the two Bundesliga. And hopefully we can continue our resurgence with a 4-2-3-1. So if you're looking forward to that in today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. Apologies if the voice is a little bit husky today. Just have a little bit of a bug I'm recovering from, but hopefully not too bad. Also probably not helped by the fact it's 10 a.m. when I'm recording this. But yeah, schedules and stuff. So off the back of yesterday's episode, where for the second game we did change to a 4-2-3-1 and did pick up our first win of the season away at Karlsruhe. Also picked up a draw against 1860 Munich. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, we did take on Arminia Bielefeld, who at that stage were in and around the same spot of the table as us, just outside of the relegation zone. And thankfully, we picked up three more points, our second win of the season yet again. It was quite an even game, but we did pick up a goal in this one in the second half through Danny Lill. It was his first goal for the club. We'll just show you guys the highlights of this one, seeing as there was only the one goal once FM actually decides to load up the game. We did make some changes at halftime because I wasn't actually that happy with how we were playing. Our two midfielders, we did put on two new roles. We'll show you guys those shortly because we are going to start with that today. We had to do a nice ball there for Lil Berries that one bottom right corner nice and early in the second half. And we do pick up our second straight win in the two Bundesliga. So that means now we find ourselves in the table off the back of six points in our last two games. To be fair, we've still only lost two games as well. So quite a few of those early games were draws, but still does feel like even though not as dominant stats-wise as we were under the 4 3, 3 we are starting to pick up some points with this 4 2 3, 1 so I think it might be a tactic or at least a shape we do persist with for the next little while, while we do continue to get results. Certainly feels like an FM this year, those two defensive midfielders do make a world of difference, and the changes that we did make in the second half of that game we played off camera, and we're going to start today's episode with uh, with our two new midfielders that we did sign going into this season, Coachella moves from a straight-out defensive midfielder on defend to a deep-lying playmaker. It's a role he's a bit more comfortable in. And as well as that, Quieto as an Ongonche. We were looking at doing that anyway, but he did grab an assist once we did change that in that previous game. So hopefully that also can just take us forward. And maybe we can start to score a few more goals because as you will be able to see on the home page, we are still the worst team in terms of goals scored, but goals conceded now, even though it's quite a high number at eight, we are now on the better side of that compared to most teams in the league. So it does feel like things are on the improve here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. And coming up today, we are going to take on Magdeburg and Darmstadt. Before then though, we are going to have to check in on some injuries. Obviously today we did sign a lone striker as well on transfer deadline day. He got injured probably still won't feature during the course of today's episode, but we'll see if he comes back after that, albeit if our strikers, who we actually own, do continue to score some goals. He might be struggling to make his way into the team. Mike Massimo Manganelli and also Lino Labonte is still out with sprained ankle ligaments. Also, we'll probably miss both games of today's episode with Daniel Hindu, the usual preferred bench option as well. But thankfully, those are two players who going into the start of the season weren't part of our first rotation plans anyway. The likes of Luca Vena, Linus Zimmer and Quieto have all recovered from some recent injuries and are able to play during the course of today's episode. But first up, we are going to take on the team who are now on bottom of the table, a spot that we occupied for most of the season up until a couple of games go and they come into this one in some pretty wretched forms. So hopefully this is a game where we can continue our winning role. And off the back of that, we are going to take on the team who currently are just below us on the table in Darmstadt. They were predicted to finish in seventh. So that one could be a little bit tougher. Their recent form actually quite similar to ours, a draw against 1860 Munich and a win 
over Kalzui. So we'll see what they look like when we go into play them in our second game of today's episode. And between now and then, they will be taking on Arminia Bielefeld away from home. But hopefully, this 4 2 3 1 continues a resurgence of form here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. And you certainly hope so in our first game of today's episode as we take on bottom placed Magdeburg. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. We are at home. It's our first choice. Levin, you could argue we should have Manganelli up front, Ziani on the bench, and Lille out of this team. But obviously with that injury, that is not the case. And as well as that, Magdeburg have also gone with a 4-2-3-1. It's a very similar shape here in the two Bundesliga. And hopefully we can make it work better and make it three wins in a row. And just shy of the half hour mark, we get the first highlight in this game. It is a corner in our favour, looking there for Stankovic at the far post. But unfortunately, can't quite link up. But Quieto with a shot from outside the box. It's a shocker there from Raymond. It is Lloris Carius, like of course we are in Germany. feel like that's an apt description of that effort and goal so far. Stats-wise, second best team in this game. But it does feel like the 4 2 3 one just giving us a little bit more for some reason. It's a howler and goal. And Quieto will open the scoring and make it 1-0 Loco Leipzig just past the half hour mark. And it looks like we're going to get one more highlight in this first half, only a few minutes shy of half time, albeit it is a throw in here to Magdeburg. There you can see the live that we're actually in fourth on the table if we can hold on to this result, albeit a few teams will still have a game in hand on this match day, but still, there will be some rise up the table. Now, a poor missed header there from Treyu down that left hand side, and a Tilgan can get on the ball for us. 1-2 there with Coachella and plays it back to him. Our deep line playmaker these days. Now Wosu will square that one for Ziani. Finds the bottom left corner. Did just suspect he might be an inch offside here. We will wait though for of course the VAR check. Those are really new to us here in the two Bundesliga. They are going to check this one obviously. And the goal has been awarded. And we are going to go into the sheds here with a two goal buffer you would like to think. With only a few minutes left in this first half. It did look like. He might just be a slight touch offside there, Ziani. Really interesting here to see what the lines tell us. But that looked like a pretty close call. But of course, with VAR, it is a clear-cut decision. And he just looks like maybe he's in line with that outstretched foot there of Awusu. And we are going to go into the sheds here with a 2-0 lead. And to be fair, that's a bit fortunate. Because overall, the game has been pretty even. But both of our shots on target have found their way into the back of the net. Obviously, that first one, really fortunate. But to be fair, feels like we owed some luck off the back of some of those results that we were getting with our dominance with that 4-3-3. Obviously, the 4 2 3 one looking a bit more solid defensively. Don't think we need to make any changes here at halftime. Everyone playing decently. We'll get things back underway with a two-goal buffer. And five minutes into the second half, first highlight of it here is a throw in our favour inside of the final third. Leon Heinke plays that one over to Coachella here right on the edge of the box. Now Heinke sprays this one out for our centre back. And Stankovic, lots of space, he'll unleash a shot. He'll grab his first goal for the club, just like Cueto in the first half. And that one's probably the pick of them. Brilliant strike that from the centre back, albeit they gave him a ton of space down that right hand side, albeit to be fair. Probably a player, they didn't think they need to mark that close to goal, but what a strike that is from Stankovic, and surely now that's three points wrapped up. We are 3-0 in front. And only a few minutes off the back of making it 3-0, now we are down here for a free kick to Magdeburg just inside of their own half, but thankfully Stankovic is there to tidy things up. Head that one back to Krapakast, but it's fair to say this has been our best performance of the season so far, obviously, with a free goal lead, and at the moment, with a clean sheet, might even get a chance here to rest some players or give some players who need some more game time a chance to do that in the latter stages of this one because it does feel like we are well and truly on top of them at this stage of the game even though stats wise hasn't been too much difference apart from the fact all our shots on target have found their way into the back of the net two goals for newcomers at the club as well which is always nice but we keep the ball here just inside of the opposition half Stankovic back there to search Coachella one two a couple of them in fact Plays the ball over the top for Atilgan. Picks out Ziani. Will chip the goalkeeper. I think this time, though, he was offside. That one looked a little bit more clear cut. We will just wait for VAR to make their decision. Indeed, that goal has been disallowed. We'll wait for the replay, but pretty sure it was quite clear cut. And indeed, that is the case. So we are still 3-0 up. 
And stopping off the back of that most recent highlight with the 3-0 lead, did feel like it was a good chance for us here to give some players who are in need of some game time a run for the latter stages of this game with that handy lead. So we're going to bring on Daniel Hindu for Lucas Search, Pip in place of Linus Zimmer, Mark Lamptey for Leon Heinke, Julian Weigel for Quieto, as well as Anton Bulland for Osman Atilgen. We're going to use all our subs up here with around about a half hour left, but surely we can hold on and win this one with a 3-0 lead. And just entering the last 15 minutes of this game, we are about to have a free kick here in favour of Michael Woos, who will try and put this one far post, potentially for Stankovic to try and get a second goal of the game, but they do head that one away there. Do mug the Berg now, Pitlicker. Tried to pick out someone there down that left-hand side. Unfortunately, though, it was picked up by a Magdeburg player, and they might get a chance here to strike while some of these players are trying to gain match fitness, albeit good work there from Awusu to get that ball back for us. I thought it was Awusu, might actually be someone else, but anyway, ball player over the top there for Ziani, not a bad idea, a little bit less on it. Goalkeeper could have found himself in a bit of trouble, but unfortunately, he could claim that, and now, good flick on header down the other end, and Lucas Shaw will get his first goal of the season. Our defence there caught out a little bit, potentially Daniela Hindu not playing on his usual side. Usually, he would come on for Stankovic, but today Stankovic having a very good game, but good flick on header there for some reason. Stankovic was actually on the wrong side, it looked like, so a bit of miscommunication there, and Magdeburg do grab a goal back to make it 3-1 with 10 minutes left. And we're nearly inside the last five minutes of this game, and now it's a throw-in here for Magdeburg, so they might be coming home here with a wet sail with those substitutions that we did make. A little bit concerning, but thankfully Ernesto will clear that one away, albeit straight into the path there of Izzy for Magdeburg, albeit now they play it back to the halfway line, but maybe made a few too many substitutions here in the latter stages of the second half. A Hindu again clears it, but straight into the path. Of a Magdeburg player, albeit they give it away there, Weigel to Ziani, bit more on that pass, and we should have been in there down the other end, but unfortunately couldn't quite link up with Awusu, and now they find some space there down that right-hand side, but a Hindu should deal with that, but it's a terrible first touch, and Lucas Shawler makes the most of it, and picks up his second goal of the game, and now we're going to load the tempo, be more disciplined, time waste a bit, and also tell our goalkeeper to slow things down in terms of distribution. But we're just starting to throw this away late. We'll also see who the best passer is, because maybe Stankovic should be in that ball-playing defender role, but actually a Hindu is a slightly better option in that position, despite the fact he hasn't had a great time since coming on with around about a half hour left. Also, we'll just adjust some opposition instructions before we do look at the replay of that goal. But now Magdeburg... In with a chance here of grabbing a late equaliser, and that would feel extremely harsh, having gone 3-0 up fairly early in the second half. We had a chance there to do something down the other end, but Ziani didn't quite link up with a Wusu and a Hindu there. Poor touch with his face to goal, and unfortunately, it is now a bit close, 3-2 with only a few minutes left. And we are starting into the last couple of minutes of this game, not too long off the back of Magdebu, making it 3-2 and thankfully we've only got one minute left in this one and it is now full time those changes that we did make just made sure we did hold on there for a win it would have felt really harsh that if we only got a point out of that game in the end actually we're the most dominant team in that game albeit not by a huge margin a little bit concerning how we perform once our backups did come on the field for that last half hour but still pretty good first half and just after half time as well that period between the half hour mark and the 55 minute mark was very good for us. We picked up three goals and in the end, just do enough to pick up a 3-2 win off the back of a late skier. And that should mean that going into the second game of today's episode, we will now be in the top half of the table, albeit might not be as good as it looks shortly because some teams will still have to play their game on this match day. And indeed, we do find ourselves all the way up in fourth, but as I said, a lot of teams in there behind us who could jump us before we do come back for that second game of today's episode, but certainly on a roll here all of a sudden at Lokomotiv Leipzig, and hopefully that will continue away at Darmstadt. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. We travel away to take on a Darmstadt team. A little bit of a different formation here, five at the back, two defensive midfielders, one cam and two strikers in terms of us exactly the same as we were for that first game of today's episode. Hopefully this time don't have a late lapse. If we do make some substitutions, also you can see there now we are all the way down to eight, but Darmstadt 
around about 12th or 13th. So hopefully, even though we are away from home, we can continue our good form and pick up three more points. And a very early highlight in this game, only three minutes gone. And Ernesto on the ball, he gets chopped down from behind there. And that should be an early red card there against Darmstadt. And that should make this now three points in the bank. Hopefully we can perform against 10 men for the best part of 90 minutes. And unfortunately, that red card was the only bit of action that did happen in that first half. Very disappointing half from us there. Only one shot and one on target. The opposition have actually had more shots than us, which is concerning, seeing as we have played against 10 men for most of the half. We also put Coachella on a deep-lying playmaker on support for around about the last 10 or so minutes of that first half, just to see if that will help. We will make a change. Osman Atilgan struggling. Bullen can come on for him. Also get Cueto to ease off tackles. On a yellow card, we'll just make sure that everything here is how it should be. But this has been a pretty disappointing performance so far against 10 men for most of that first half. It is still nil all. And thankfully, we're going to get an early highlight here in the second half, albeit it might be in favour of Darmstadt here. They have the ball just outside of the box. Salik there with a shot. Thankfully, though, Krapikas makes a fairly easy save. And this highlight will continue. He rolls that one out to Ernesto on the right-hand side of our box. And hopefully, off the back, of giving the guys a bit of a spray at half time. We do react well, albeit now it's a chance here for Darmstadt yet again. Square that one nicely for Dyke. Big chance, but he puts that one wide. Thankfully, it is still nil all. And while we are here, it might be a safer idea to put Coachella back on defenders, a deep line playmaker, because we are struggling a little bit, even though we are playing against only 10 men. And up to the hour mark, still nil all with not many highlights. In fact, none in our favor so far, apart from that early red card to Darmstadt, so I do feel like we need to shake things up here. Danny Hummel can come on for a Wusu on that 6.5. Also a little up front, seeing as Ziani is on a 6.4 and Julian Weigel for the yellow-carded Queto. But it's been disappointing so far, nil all, against the 10 men of Darmstadt. And not too long off the back of that most recent batch of substitutions, we do get another highlight in this game with around about 25 minutes left. And we do get the ball back there as Darmstadt did try and play one in behind him finally. Looks like we might do something here with the ball at our feet. Nice pass there from Heinke for Julian Weigel, but unfortunately squared that one for Lowell, who was offside even then. Good save from the opposition and goalkeeper. And with 20 minutes left, it is still nil all. It might be time for us to go a bit more attacking. And we're just about in the last 10 minutes of this game. As you can see, we're starting to get on the front foot a bit more since we have gone on to an attacking mentality. But still, nil all. This would be a really disappointing result off the back. Of our three prior wins, we are going to make our last substitution while we are here. Both Leon Heinke and Coachella are down two red hearts. I think Ricardo Grimm might be a better option off the bench. He can come on for Coachella also. We're going to put as many players as we can here on attacking duties or more support roles instead of defend for these last 10 minutes. And hopefully that will help us grab a winner against what should be a tiring 10 men of Darmstadt. And we're inside the last couple of minutes of this game. We're going to demand more from our boys here. But now we are at the 90-minute mark. Only three minutes left in this game. I think it's time for us to up the tempo. We might also not play for set pieces and tell our guys to be more expressive. Usually the board do want us to play four set pieces. So we'll turn that off seeing as we are playing against 10 men. Might be something which does help us in this situation. Late throw on here. But for some reason Zimmer's taking his sweet, sweet time on it. But gets it back, puts the ball here into the mix. Just think of it, just there. We'll grab his second goal for the club, his second of today's episode. And surely that will give us all three points from this game. And off the back of that, we are definitely going to slow things down and also put most of our players back to those previous roles just to make sure we do hold solid all the last few minutes of this game and also go a bit time wasty as well. Because obviously, do want to hang on here for what has been a hard fought. 1-0 lead, so we'll be more disciplined and also go back to playing for set pieces. But thankfully, despite the fact that Zimmer there took a long time to put that ball into play, despite the fact there was only around 30 seconds left, he took up a good 20 seconds eyeing up that throw in, but put a ball into the mixer and Stankovic with a towering header, finds that top left corner, his second goal of today's episode, that one a little bit more expected from a centre-back and it took a long time but eventually we pick up three points against the team of Darmstadt. Obvious turning point was that early red card to their striker, but to be fair, didn't change how they played in defense too much. Just meant that they played with one less defensive midfielder, and even then, not sure how late they changed to that style. They might have been playing with two defensive midfielders for most of the game and thought they had a chance late, seeing as it was still nil all. But thankfully, we pick up three more points, even though we certainly 
weren't at our best and that will make it four wins in a row now in the two Bundesliga does feel like the 4-2-3-1 is here to stay as we beat Darmstadt who are down to 10 men by only one goal. So it does appear as if the change to a 4-2-3-1 is the key to us here at Lokomotiv Leipzig in the two Bundesliga. That's now four wins in a row since we have changed our shape. We have slipped down the table a little bit, seeing as some teams did play the remaining games on that match day off the back of us, picking up that slightly iffy 1-0 win there over Darmstadt. Thankfully, maybe some of those changes we did make at the 90-minute mark did help. But now we are up in sixth on the table, which is certainly a lot better than what we were looking like only a couple of episodes ago now. 10 points clear of the teams who are automatically going down to the free league of the season. Ingolstadt currently find themselves in that relegation playoff spot and they are six points behind us. It's certainly not out of the woods just yet, but if we can continue to play the way we have been since we did switch that 4 2 3 1, even though stats wise, probably not quite as dominant as we were in some games compared to the 4 3 3, but we are picking up results clearly. Four wins. In a row, hopefully, we can find ourselves out of a relegation battle and can just make sure we will stay in the two Bundesliga for another season. And hopefully, that might help us financially with a decent transfer budget to work with for the next season of the save. But that will do it for today's episode. Two more wins since we have switched to that 4 2 3 1. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well we've actually got a couple of really tough games coming up off the back of the ones that we have just played Werder Bremen in third and then Nuremberg in second home and away we might come back though in November seeing as it does feel like now not quite in such a relegation battle and even then those games probably ones you wouldn't expect us to win. We might also play Augsburg off camera, those guys in seventh, and take on some teams in different positions on the table, seeing as it does feel like at the moment we are kind of a mid-table team all of a sudden. We'll take on St. Pauli away. They find themselves in 12th, and off the back of that, we'll take on the table toppers at home in Jan Regensburg. So those will be the two games we'll come back for in tomorrow's episode, start to progress through this season, potentially a little bit more if we are just going to be a mid-table team, but obviously if we continue our good form in between now and those two games tomorrow, we might start to find ourselves potentially in a promotion hunt, which would be extremely unexpected off the back of the start to the season that we did have, but obviously things are improving at the moment with the 4 2 3 one We'll see if that continues, especially in those next couple of games against Werder Bremen and Nuremberg. We'll come back tomorrow and see how things are going before we do take on St. Pauli and Young Regensburg. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.